So now that we have seen that cash flows are divided into three types, cash flow from operations, cash flow from investments, and cash flow from financing. They're also called as CFO, CFI, and CFF. And uh, if you look at cash flow from operations, they can be calculated using two ways. One, there is a direct method, and there is another method called the indirect method. In most cases, you'll find that the indirect method is used. However, it is good to know what direct method is all about. So we'll start with the direct method first and then move on to the indirect method and then we'll discuss the cash flow from investments and financing. So for understanding the direct method, it's basically going back to your income statement and redrawing your income statement. Sales, COGS, we have the gross profits and then we have SGNA, selling general and administrative expenses. What we get is EBIT earnings before interest and taxes and then we have the interest then we get EBT and uh, finally we have the taxes that is paid to the government so we get net income now as we know that this is basically on the basis of accrual method of accounting so let's put some numbers also into this income statement thousand 500 is the COGS, so 500 becomes a gross profit. Let's say SGN expense is 100, so EBIT is 400 here. Interest expense, let's say it's 50, so your earnings before taxes becomes 350. Let's say taxes was um, 100, so your net income is 250. Now, this was accrual basis of accounting. So this accrual basis of accounting means that these sales or cash positions which we are talking about may not reflect actual cash inflows or cash outflows. So let us hypothetically assume some cash positions because of these items. Say for example sales. Sales was 1000. So uh, let's assume that 800 was the cash that was received. So what about the remaining amount which is 200? So this actually goes into the balance sheet because 800 while it is received in cash the remaining 200 is yet to be received and uh, this will be classified as accounts receivables so this is a current asset and the 200 you're going to receive in the near future let's now look at the cogs or cost of goods sold let's assume that out of this 500 you have actually paid 400 during the year and uh, the remaining amount that was still left was 100. Now this was an expense for you and you have not paid that expense to the full extent. So this would be classified as a liability and in fact it goes under the current assets, sorry current liability side and um, we call that as accounts payables. So this goes as a liability called as accounts payables. Now uh, think about selling general and administrative expenses. So these were 100 here. Let's assume that uh, we have paid 50. So what happens to the remaining 50? Obviously, it these are expenses. So this will be recorded as current liability. And this goes under the heading called accrued expenses. OK, accrued expenses. Interest, let's again assume that you have not paid this fully. You have paid only 25. The remaining 25 will be classified as current liability and this will go as interest payable uh, under the current liability section. What about taxes? Let's assume that uh, some number was paid in cash. Let's assume that 50 was paid and um, the remaining 50 uh, which is the unpaid amount will again go as current liability and we'll call that as taxes payables. So what we have seen here is that uh, because of the accrual method of accounting, it leads to two situations. One, there's a cash that is paid and second, the unpaid portion is recorded in the balance sheet. So as we have seen, all these transactions have led to the creation of some balance sheet current assets or current liabilities. So let's now sum total the total amount of cash that we have 800 less 400 so we are remaining 400 less 50 350 so it becomes 325 here so this comes out to be 275 so when we talk about the direct method of accounting in fact 
we look at the income statement and we see how much of the cash has been received from individual items and how much has been the cash outgo and we basically sum total that and call that as direct method of accounting or cash of cash flows now one very important thing that you must understand is that within the income statement you may sometimes find items which are not related to the operations of the business so here we are assuming that all items here were anyways related to the core operations of the business some of the items may not be related to the core operations of the business say for example a uh, sale of asset sale of fixed assets so any gains related to sales of fixed assets may actually come here in between the income statement so you may have to ignore that gain on sale of asset because that is not a operating activity we are talking about cash flow from operations and uh, this gain on sale of fixed assets or uh, cash that has received from fixed assets will be uh, you know rather classified as cash flow from investments